For the month of January, I tracked every single dollar, every single cent that I spent without exception. It's the start of a new year and a new month, and that's the opportunity to put my credit card roadmap into place for the rest of the year. It's also a great checkpoint to see where I was really excelling in the credit card game and where I was falling short and could optimize to make things a little bit better. Here's exactly how I did it and how it could potentially work for you. So building a credit card roadmap can actually be really fun. It's a strategy that takes into account looking at where you currently are and then seeing where you could make things just a little bit better to set yourself up for the long run to make more money through your normal spending patterns. Here's how I did it. Starting January 1st, my wife and I agreed to spend with only credit cards, no cash, no gift cards, because we wanted to see where every single dollar was going to which cards we were spending it on, and which category those were being tracked under. After doing that for a whole month, I was able to go back through our credit card statements and accurately log to see where we are getting our rewards points from. Now tracking everything, including a ton of expenses for this guy who's making an appearance in the video today, was really revealing. I could see exactly how much we spent, how much we earned back for those purchases, and where our rewards points were really coming from. The cards in my rotation that I used in January were the Capital One Venture X, which you can see my application and unboxing video above, the Fidelity 2% Cashback Visa, the Chase Sapphire Preferred, and the Discover It Cashback Credit Card. My wife and I ended up spending a total of $4,669.86 for the month. Here's how we strategically divided our spend on those cards. The Fidelity 2% Cashback Visa was just making a cameo appearance. It was our everyday spend card until we got approved for the Capital One Venture X, which with its 2X earnings back on everything else that you could purchase, and us now needing to hit a 75,000 mile sign up bonus as a top priority, we moved our spending into that card as our catch-all. I used the Chase Sapphire Preferred for 3x back on streaming and 5x back on flights, which I did make a flight purchase at the time in that month in the Chase Travel Portal. The Discover It cashback card happened to have dining and drug stores as its 5% multiplier category, so while I normally would use my Sapphire Preferred to get 3x points back on dining, I was able to get 5% cash back with the Discover It to maximize there. Now, at this point, that's my standard credit card lineup. And if you'd like to see any more about those cards or how to get referral offers to those, I have my own down in the first links of the description. That's what I use, and I talk a lot about these in other videos on the channel and explain how I try to get the most out of them myself. That setup that I put into play as of January led me to a spending rewards value of $76.32, assuming just a standard one cent per point value on our earnings. Now, I thought that was pretty good. Extrapolated over 12 months, that turns into $915.84 from the current setup that we already have. However, when I started to look deeper, there were some holes that began to appear. The general rule of thumb is that 2% back is what you should be shooting for on every single purchase. If you're over 2%, you're doing pretty good and no need to rearrange things that aren't broken. 2% is fine and anything under 2% you should probably look for better earnings. I always tell people it's important to go through an exercise like this, or at least think about what cards they're spending on regularly because making such a tiny difference can have huge effects over the long run of your typical spending habits. You'll see that at the end of this video, what my optimizations are going to do to my spending. So when I analyze my current setup, Rent was my highest spend at $1,630, but I wasn't earning a single reward point back in that category. Groceries were another high spend, ranking as my third behind miscellaneous expenses, but I'm not earning anything higher in that category than a standard 2% or 2x miles back when I spent on my Venture X. Now, that's not a problem as I said before, 
but it's not great in that category either. My final observation was I was just earning 2% in a ton of different categories. And because of that, I knew I was missing out on some big opportunities to potentially increase my earnings rate. So this brings me to my credit card roadmap for 2024. Now knowing a strong backbone of my spending habits, getting a chance to analyze those, I can put together my plays that I wanna make for the rest of the year. I have a really good setup now that is simple in that I only rotate through about four credit cards and it's pretty diverse in its earnings, getting a good at least 2% back on everything. I also pay a total of $490 in annual fees. That's $395 to the Venture X and that's $95 to the Sapphire Preferred. So this year is all about optimizing my setup, not necessarily taking on any huge annual fee cards that could really reduce my earnings at the end of the day. For those of you who watch my channel, I also always encourage people to take things in digestible bite by bite chunks as they add credit cards. It's awesome to get a ton at once, but you gotta build up your profile slowly to make sure you're not creating any more problems for yourself that outweigh any potential benefits you may get. So let's talk about how I can add to my setup for optimization and not necessarily add big annual fee cards and what difference that will make for me. The easiest setup to start with is adding for rent. And I'm sure you know where I'm going with this one. The obvious choice for that is the Built MasterCard. The Built MasterCard is an easy 1x back $0 annual fee card that gets you earnings on rent payments. Most of the time when you pay rent with a credit card, the fee assessed by your apartment complex to you outweighs any reward points benefits you could be getting. So it's rare that you'd want to put those charges on a card. But the bill with its 1x earnings on rent actually waives annual fees charged by your apartment complex to you in processing those transactions. With rent being my single biggest monthly expense, this is a far and away obvious change to make to optimize my setup right now. Now the next easy optimization is to add an outrageously high multiplier credit card to a category that I'm currently just getting 2x back in. My choice for that is the City Custom Cash. The Custom Cash offers categories of restaurants, gas stations, grocery stores, travel, select transit, select streaming services, drug stores, home improvement stores, fitness clubs, and live entertainment. And while all of those categories may be exhausting to read out in a row, Fortunately, City just automatically applies whatever spend I have in any of them, highlights the highest one, and then applies that 5% cash back to my account. For me, I would get this card and use it specifically in only gas spend. Finally, the last area that I see for improvement right now is that big chunk of spend in groceries. In fact, it's my third largest category and I even made a specific analysis as to which credit cards actually make you the most on food and grocery spend. So now I have to answer the question, why don't I have one of those credit cards myself? My biggest problem here with not being able to optimize for one of those top grocery cards is that my closest grocery store is a Walmart. And for those of you who have been in this situation before and can do your grocery shopping at a Walmart, Walmart doesn't code groceries differently. It's just categorized as a general everything else purchased, so the highest multiplier you can get back is 2x. It's not worth it for me to go down the road to pay higher prices for groceries and maybe get rewards back like 4x back with the Amex Gold or the Amex Blue Cash Preferred where I could get 6x back up to $6,000 spending. I just don't see the effort required there or the potential return to change my regular shopping habits, so unfortunately, I think I'm stuck with Walmart and earning 2X back on groceries no matter what I do. For those of you experiencing the same dilemma, and I'm sure there are tons of you out there watching this that are, I know you feel my pain. So anyways, what do these small shifts, adding the built MasterCard and the city custom cash do to my actual returns? Well, what if I went back and retroactively applied those optimizations in January? Before, I was making $76.32, but by optimizing my setup with those two improvements, I'd elevate my earnings to $98.54 for that same month. That's over $20 of difference a month without adding a single dollar in annual fee. 
Over the course of the year, that increases my earnings by $266. That is a massive difference. And I think for almost anybody, if they walked up to you on the street and said, hey, do you want $266 for doing almost absolutely nothing? And you get that every single year after, I think almost anybody would say, absolutely, sign me up, I'm ready to go. So my final thoughts on my setup and what the future holds is that I hope it was as beneficial for you watching me go through this process as it was for me learning about myself and my own spending. I couldn't believe there was still so much more opportunity, even though I felt that I was fairly optimized to begin with in January with my current setup. But I realized that there's still more potential out there, and I think it's a great reminder to anybody who's considering picking up different cards to optimize their setup how worth it it can potentially be. I'll always encourage you to make a plan and then execute on that plan, but I know that these type of improvements are actually going to make a difference in my life. So if you have any comments, please leave them down below or longer questions about how I put this together. You can email them directly to me at consulting.rdg at gmail.com and I'll do my best to get back to you and be able to personalize that a little bit more. So thank you once again for watching this video. And of course, we'll see you in the next one.